<sighs> Hello and welcome to uh, Art with Gardega. Um, I'm going to go over this painting that I'm working on. It's a, uh, a commission of a uh, clipper ship in a storm. Somebody from Florida um, asked me to paint this for them. No real direction. I just pretty much am allowed to do whatever I want, which is dangerous. Now, the, uh, I'm going to go over a couple things here on this painting, which is not done. It's still at a stage where I'm not completely happy with it, but some things are starting to work, so that's why I'm showing this to you. Uh, what I did here was I decided to start with a limited color palette, so I didn't have to focus on color. Just get the structure down, <coughs> the waves, etc. Um, the ship is just a placeholder. It's not even worked on yet. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm working with four basic colors. Uh, I worked. I studied under a very famous artist in Norway not, named Odd Nerdrum, and he paints his masterpieces with only four colors. His colors are vermilion, Mars black, um, white, titanium white, and then um, Naples yellow, I believe it is. Um, that's pretty much what I used here because I didn't want to focus on color. Um, I wanted to just get shapes and structure in a little bit. So I base toned this with burnt sienna, which I showed an earlier video on. And right now, on a painting like this, first of all, you cannot over plan in the beginning. You can have a basic rough, I did a basic rough oil sketch. I'll show at the end of this video to get it right. Um, and aside from that, you're, there's no way if you plan out your waves and your ocean structure in a sketch and do it, it's going to wind up looking like an illustration, not like a painting, an oil painting. There's a big difference. So you want to work with the ocean. I've repainted it many times just trying to get a feel. You know, you can't pre-plan things like that. You can pre-plan certain things. It's architecture, etc. You're not going to pre-plan an ocean. You can, but it's going to take the life out of it. So what happens in a painting like this is you just keep reworking it and beating it to death until you get it the way you want it. Without, and also you have to know when to stop, not overwork. So basically what I did here was uh, you have your main light source, with, which is... Um, just a little bit of Naples yellow glazed in on top of white. The way you glaze is you put down a color like white, let it dry completely, then you use linseed oil and you can glaze on top of it with another color. You'll never get that richness if you just go directly with say a Naples yellow. If you glaze on top of another color it becomes like stained glass. Now if that dries I can even glaze on top of it with say uh, you know if I wanted to tone it down a little bit or blue whatever. This warmer color here is the base tone I let bleed through. That's the burnt sienna. Uh, I've made another video when I base tone this whole canvas, which that is why you base tone a canvas. You could never add that in and have it look correctly if you can see that warm, uh, warm red there showing through. It just, uh, I really like it, and that's why I base tone. I use always, I always use burnt sienna 98% of the time on my canvases. So what happens is you're going to have the lightest lights will be up around the ship to draw your eye, basically to a pyramid composition, roughly. Again, the ship is just roughed in. That's not what the ship is going to look like. I just not wanted a placeholder. I'm not worried about showing things when they're not completely working, because I do a lot of murals. I do them outside. And I just did a Picasso mural. I had to paint him lifelike, sitting in a chair. And for four days, it didn't look like Picasso. But I had to just stick to it, even though people were coming by looking at it. You just have to know that you're going to get it. So it's a matter of faith. So here, if you notice, this is Naples yellow and cobalt blue. And what happens is a little of that gives you a greenish tone. So that's where the light would be shining through the tops of the waves here. So that's kind of where I try to work in the, uh, the greens. And then it goes down to blue and the darkest darks are going to be down here. Um, and there's a lot of glazing. I'm waiting for things to dry, glazing over them with oil. I, I use a, um, a medium I also made with a DeMar varnish, linseed oil, and turpentine, equal parts, one, uh, one third of each. Okay, now, um, so this is to be a little dark, so I'm going to work. This needs to be more of a mid-tone, which is going to be a bluish mid-tone. This will be a dark, dark. Uh, to carry over from this, you want to be able to keep your eye following around the painting. You don't want your eye to ever fall off a piece of art. So basically, I'm going to try to work it where you go like this. Your 
eye does this, it comes back up into the ship. That's my feeling. If you look at any of the old masters, they'll kind of lead you around the painting, guide your eye around the painting. Um, so it's starting to work in places, other places I'm not completely happy with. Um, you know, this is okay for me. And um, with this, again, I want to be more of a middle tone. It's too dark. This I want dark. Uh, I like this area here. I'm, I'm almost happy with this. I'm going to do some more work onto it, some more love towards the end. The ship is completely out of joint right now. This is not correct compared to this. This should be more here. Not worried about that. You've got to be able to let things go in your mind and not get caught up on them and just leave them while you're working other stuff and just know that you'll get back to it and fix it. It's a psychological game, but you have to be able to do it. So this is where this clipper ship uh, stands. I figured it'll be three more full days and I'll update till it's finished. Um, but that's it. Now the biggest thing is obviously you want your ship to be the strongest part of the piece. So when you get down to the ship, that's where you have to really put the time and the love in. That'll be a full day to get it right. You don't want to have a nice ocean, beautiful sky painting, and then have some half-baked clipper ship there. Um, you know, it just it won't work. You've got to put as much love into that or more than any, any other part of the painting. I personally prefer oceans and sky. I don't love architecture. But you just have to force yourself to bite the bullet and get it done right, use some reference. I'm not using reference for the ocean. It's completely from feel. Just, you know, I've changed it so many times. Um, you know, there's no way to sketch this. Like I said, you can sketch this out ahead of time. It's not going to get you anywhere. You have to just keep beating it until you're happy with it. And just rework it and rework it and rework it. And, um, and then, you know, after your dessert, I, I took my dessert first, which is all this stuff. And then at the end, you have your vegetables, which is painting the uh, clipper ship. So I'll update. Um, spend another eight hours on it today. I'll show you at the end of the day what it looks like. And then I'll spend a full day on the ship, which I'll document. And that's the um, clipper ship. And I figure, like I said, probably three more days to completion. And then I'll ship it to uh, Florida. And I'll also show you the, um, the rough initial sketch. That's all I did was a rough oil sketch to get a feel. And which is, this isn't too far off from that. You know, obviously you change it a bit. I think it'll work. So that's that's art with Gardega, and um, that's the clipper ship. <laughs>